Okay, so I'm back at it again. Here is my semi-abstracted pot of flowers, which I put modeling paste on last week using a stencil. And then my, um, I believe it was my palette knife or my silicone spatula down here. I am now going to show you how to put a wash layer on some of the modeling paste and then some dry brushing. And it's all trial and error. I may like this, I may not, but you just keep layering until you get what you want. So this is an indigo um, high flow acrylic. And I'm going to brush this on top of this modeling paste here. I wanted to tone that color down. Now, what I like about putting um, the wash on that, I can also take a rag and pull some of that color out. So manipulating the paint by erasing which is something I think we can play with uh, in the future. Okay. And I can keep doing this for a while until I get something that I like. It's like staining, almost like putting a patina on uh, sculpture. Okay. What did you say the name of that type of paint is? This is golden it comes in a tube like this it's a high flow high flow it's almost like a dye okay now these flowers some of them are sort of lost in space out here i just picked this blue uh, because it's more contrasting so you can see it so i'm going to dry brush now so no water again the magical 45 degree angle and a drag across that textured surface I can go thicker if I want to be more impasto, build it up. I can also um, kind of swirl my brush around. That'll give a softer, more diffuse look. Kind of scrubbing. This is making it look like one big blue flower, which is pretty. Well, right now I'm really just focused on, you know, skills. But anyway, so that's that's the idea with that. Okay, now this next step, this is review. Okay, I'm gonna kind of review all the layering that we did this round. And the layers can occur so many different ways. I've already, um, put a wash on this canvas paper. I am going to lightly wet this. I'm gonna draw on this with a um, charcoal pencil. So one of the things to get comfortable with is, is layering, but uh, creating integrated layers. I am going to use a green, it's sort of like charcoal, it's a watercolor pencil. And I just want to get, uh, what's gonna call some pattern on that ground. So I'm doing this continuous line drawing. Graphite is great. I'm using this graphite pencil and working the whole sur surface. I don't, at this moment, I don't have any plan in mind, let me go with my black charcoal. And I like it when the surface is wet because the charcoal bleeds a little bit. It acts like a paint. You can smear it with your finger or a brush, it becomes a paint. 
Okay, now I'm going to transition to paint. I'm going to use my palette knife. And I'm scraping, and I like that because I get trans blending, but I also get uh, transparency. Okay, now I'm going to go thicker. Impasto, I think. This is a manganese blue that I like. It's not going as thick as I would like. It's more transparent. Still glopping it on thick, but transparent. So working the whole surface. I'm going to use one of my new um, small silicone spatulas I just got. Well, the surface is pretty wet, so I'm not getting, um, you know, as solid blobs of paint as I might like. So if I want that, I could put this in the sun and then come back and do some more layers. I can play with, I'm just reviewing all the techniques. Graffito, which also blends the paint together. So if you want to know how to abstract, this is a good way to start. It's just with your background. It's almost like weaving this whole pattern together. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to get thicker impasto on there. Again, that 45 degree angle. This is really fun to do with leftover paint. Okay, now my Ribble painting that I like to do with this squeeze, uh, squeeze paint. Okay. Okay, then this is really fun. You take your jelly paper call it print painting, pull some of that up. It blobs the paint out, but then I can take what's on this surface and I can put more of it in another area. And I can also keep that deli paper for future works of art. It's a little more spontaneous, okay? I love that. Okay. So that probably should dry, and then I would come in with modeling paste. I'll give it a go. I don't know if it's going to work on this, and if it doesn't, I'll get another um, surface to paint on and try and address some of the questions that came up about modeling paste. All right, so take some of that glop. And I just mix my color right into my modeling paste.
Okay, so again, the 45 degree angle, glob it on. Now this is blending with the other colors, which I don't mind. Okay, now I'm going to try and carve through. So now I'm pulling that out and I get a transparency. I see what's down below. So this would be perfect, Allison. I, I think I want to do this in the future, like put some things on a surface and then, you know, cover it with modeling paste and then it's like you're excavating. It's a little bit of a surprise. What's below? Okay, I'm gonna try and put it on with a brush. <clears throat> I'm gonna add a little water. I wanna see if that will make it spread a little bit more, almost like, uh, oh, now it's blending all that together. Okay, I'm gonna do it right here on the paper, okay. So if I go like this, Denise, in this sort of a motion, that looks a little, that could be one ice cream abstract texture. Can't actually see what you're doing, it's out of the picture. Oh, okay there oh i see that's a good idea and that was with a brush i did a round brush and i'm i'm drag pulling it to the side curving it okay, okay. um to dry the brush i added a little bit of water okay okay then you could have do blocks chunks like this that could be an ice cream type texture um let's see what else you could do some without modeling paste and just that was with modeling paste the first no, one? this is without this is just straight paint a little bit of water sort of impasto sort of dry brush the thing is when the, all of this dries then you can drag more color over it mm -hmm. right and which will give it more depth. Hmm. Okay. 